And in terms of like the fans and the people that are watching the show, um, what do you think was like the biggest misconception about you throughout that journey on Love is Born? I was a stalker. Oh my gracious. Even back in high school, Jennifer inspired more than Welcome to Growing Up Latin. Thank you. I'm so excited. We've been trying to work out this date for a minute. Ever. Forever. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that you told me, so we, we were actually supposed to do an interview like a couple of weeks ago and it didn't work out because I was like, I really want to get this right. I, I want to make sure that we have like great service. And one of the things that you told me was, I really want to make sure we make this happen because I know your interview is going to be different. What made you say that? I feel like your interviews are more are not superficial that they go deeper into like the root cause or right? basically like really dig down into who is who am i as a person versus just keeping on the superficial level of all the episodes that i've watched so yeah that's why i was really excited i was like this is gonna be a good one i know she's not gonna shoot it coach she's just gonna ask the questions and it's gonna be amazing yeah well, thank you for coming on the show. I want to start with the Sala. What were the Sala vibes like for you growing up? Um, what type of food were you eating? What type of music were you listening to? What novelas were you watching? Paint me that picture. So when I was growing up, I grew up in the humble uh, Puerto Rico <laughs> island. And I say humble because I come from like humble, like becoming like upbringings, right? And it was a single single household. My, my mom with five kids by herself. We used to live in the second level of my grandparents' house, like on top of my grandparents' house. It was an unfinished house. It was a wood house with unfinished floors, no doors. And everybody had their own room in terms of like, there were like four rooms in that house, but you can literally easily, like when they were building it, it was like kind of like, oh, you can just literally go to the other room as easy uh, we use curtains as doors and uh, I grew up bilingual I was always enrolled in bilingual school since I was a little kid when I was five years old I believe we moved to Florida and then I did take kindergarten in Florida and then I moved back to Puerto Rico and did my entire studies into college in Puerto Rico um, yeah, I, I love salsa. I love merengue. I, I, anything that is going to make me vibe and dance, I'm here for it. I love to dance. I even participated in the dance club when I was in high school. Um, what else? I, what yeah, part of Puerto Rico? I, to the West. And that was what I was like going now. Um, so I grew up major, majority of my, my childhood in Añasco. And then mm -hmm. I went and did my college in Mayagüez, which is like the nearby town. So this is in the West Puerto Rico. It's not like the touristy area that usually people see when they go like, oh, we're going to San Juan. No, it's, it's two hours and a half away from San Juan. Uh, yeah. But it's gorgeous, right? Like it has a lot of things to do and stuff like that. And Añasco is a really small town. You know everybody, everybody knows you. And yeah. That's literally when I, where I grew up. And just paint me the picture of like in school, like what was, cause it seems like you were really like into school a lot. I am, I, I have, yes, I, I can say that I was smart, but I was not the popular girl. I wasn't mm -hmm. the girl that was like, because she was pretty. It was because she was smart. I was mm -hmm. actually, be, I was actually bullied into like high school. Um, really? Yeah, they used to call me Ugly Betty when I was in elementary school. Oh, and no. Yeah, and I grew up, I remember, like, today, 
I will use I used to go on the lunch room right like lunch break during lunch break I will go like you will put all your book bags because in Puerto Rico there's nothing like lockers or that fancy stuff like the infrastructure is like really outdated and we literally put like the book bags in a in a pile and I would just literally like go in the corner and put my hoodie on and just cry my entire lunch room as sad as oh. that sounds and it was really hard for me to get that confidence when I was growing up. Something spiked on me when I was in sixth grade and I was like, oh, I'm going to love myself and I'm going to have that self-confidence. But it was really hard. They used to call me Ugly Betty. There was this instance when, when a, a girl, one of the really big bullies, uh, she used to bully me a lot. And one of the things that she told me was like, it's okay, you're ugly now, but when you grow up, you're going to be pretty and I'm going to be ugly because that's the way it goes. Oh my God. And, I, and then that always stuck with me. And I'm like, and then I look back at the pictures and I'm like, I was one of probably the most attractive girls in school, but if you don't have the confidence. You're, you're going to believe whatever anybody says or tells you. Right. And then middle school was the same thing. I was trying to always be like, please be my friend or like, the friends that I have were not really my friends. They were more like, oh, well, you're the smartest one here. Like, let's, can I have your homework kind of thing it, all through high school. So that was literally like my upbringing, as sad as they sound. Yeah. Talk to me about like the dynamic with your mom. You said she was a single mom. So where was yes. your dad during this time? And do you still have a relationship with him? So I do not have a relationship with my father. Um, he has never been present in my life. I've seen him four times and I'm 32 years old. Um, he always, since, well, when my mom was growing up, like my mom had, when she was married with my father, he cheated on her and basically they split up really early. Like she was pregnant when they split up. Um, and then after that, my uh, my father literally just was like, oh, is she mine? Like, that kind of like, oh no. and it was so messed up. And then, like, the day that, because, like, you know, like, usually they do not, like, allow you to do, get divorced if you're pregnant because then it's going to be un bastardo, right? And you don't want that. So they try to avoid that. And they allowed, they granted my mom the divorce, and he resigned to everything he even quit i don't even know how to say in english la patria potestad mm -hmm. so like custody everything that had to be paternal rights and yeah. he's paternized he resigned to them and then like throughout the years this is from what, I'm, what i've heard from my mom and stuff like that like i the only time that i have memory of and i recall i was like eight years old and one day he sh just showed up and it was because like he uh he owed alimony and like mm -hmm. child support and like the debt is like so big. And to this day, it's like he hasn't paid a cent. It right. has always been my mom, mom. And I remember him, he's like showing up out of the blue and they're like, oh, this is your dad. Um, so my mom was like really strong on me when I was growing up, but she's my everything. Like she's, without her, I'm not, I'm, without her, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. And I, I do owe her everything that I have to her. And she's the mm -hmm. only person in this world I can count on, obviously besides my husband and now right. his family. But be, be, besides that, and like in those years growing up, like it was just my mom. And yeah, she, she always said to me, I raised you to be a strong woman. And I definitely think that's what she wanted for me. And mm -hmm. she achieved that. She achieved that. Regardless of anything, I do have a a strong character. And anything that life throws at me, which hasn't been easy. My life has been far from easy. Um, yeah. I just, I've survived. I've managed through and I pushed through, basically. Right. What, I mean, you said eight years old was the time that you saw your dad. That was the last the time, time that you saw for the first the last time. time, the first time, the last time I saw him was I was 10, I was 10 years old and um, I had uh, GI issues, like 
gastrointestinal issues and they uh-huh. couldn't find out what was wrong with me um by that time they diagnosed me with colitis but then they figure out i don't know if it is like it was just kind of like that scenario and my mom called him because my little brother by that time was also sick and right. she was like i need help i need help and he showed up to the hospital mm-hmm. and i even remember like today and it's something that i will never forget like my mom was trying to like do not be mean to him please just give him like the opportunity please like please cooperate right like and you're a kid you're like why i have to do anything with this man who hasn't right. been there for me and basically when i uh i remember when he was having a conversation with my mom and i was just like playing or like coloring or something and i remember him telling her my my mom was like dude like chico please like just just contribute like 50 dollars every two weeks something contribute right. something to the debt and his response was i have a car to pay Have so a, it didn't ma- I have a car to pay an auto oh. to pay uh-huh. and other oh. car payment so uh-huh. that can become a living for his children right and because i my brother all this brother and me were from the same father okay and um and yeah like i it, it never like forgotten that you know like and that was how i felt that he was going to be in life Yeah, so he was like that was like the, like my last memory of him until recently the last time I heard from him was when I turned 27. It was the day after. You know how in Facebook when you get a message from a friend, it used to be bubbles, like that was like five years, seven yeah. years, eight years yeah, ago. Yeah. It used to be bubbles, right? Like when someone was your friend, it will pop up a bubble when they send you a message. And the ones that were not your friends will go to others and you will not see it unless you look for it. Mm-hmm. randomly that day i was heading to work and i see a pop-up message and it said his name and i was like what like i haven't heard from him and that's during this time like 17 to 18 years and i open it and it said happy birthday and i'm like mm. i was so confused i was really flustered that's how i was feeling i was only really, really flustered i couldn't understand why now like like i'm a grown up like why now and um i remember i questioned him i keep sending him text messages like like i messaged him and i was like what's your purpose like what do you need like what did he say instead of instead of him uh <laughs> he's a coward instead of him saying I'm sorry it's all my fault. He was like blaming my mother cuz she was fighting for our child support. And oh, wow. the last thing that I did, I tried to like make sure that he will contribute to our child support for like college and like try to hire a private investigator and everything to find him and I was not able to and I didn't succeed it, but that was the last attempt like courting things. Like he even had arrest arrest orders because of his debt, right? Mm-hmm. And um He was like, "Oh yeah," and like she was always like fighting over the child on him. I'm like, "That was your right." And that was her responsibility as well. If she didn't fight for us, who was going to? And well, let me let me ask you a question. Um were you ever looking cuz I know you did question him, but were you ever looking to repair the relationship with your dad or was it just like why are you even I contacting think it was a, me? I think it was like the way that the message went. Like uh-huh. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt and if he would have come to me and say I really screwed up. I don't deserve your forgiveness or something like that, you know? But right. instead of like he even mentioned my 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 aunt that had passed away at the time for like eight months and it was mm-hmm. like how dare you? Like how dare you that the person that has actually look after your kids cuz you didn't have the guts to raise them you're going to blame her like right the audacity yeah. was like way more and like i did like i did honestly wanted to see like is there anything here to be like make like i don't know fix and yeah. there was nothing there to fix he was still the same guy and and, and then in that moment you're like well the father that i ha- i had right, 
the possibilities of the what ifs, right? Like, oh, if I've grown up with my dad, I'm like, I don't know if I'm being great. Because, like, I, I don't right. know if that kind of like character and person is the one that I wanted in my life. Right. So I wonder for you, how does this show up in, like, your past relationships with men? Oh, a thousand percent. I have always yeah. say this, and I've even said it in the show, in my interviews and all that stuff. They didn't show it, but I always said that I was really, like, at first, like, when you heal, then you look back and you grow up. You're like, I don't need him. Yeah, but yes, I needed him. I needed a father figure because no one taught me how I was going to be loved right. Mm -hmm. My mom's jobs and responsibility was like, I'm going to make you strong. Not mm -hmm. that she wasn't caring or loving, but this is how you're going to be treated by a man. This mm -hmm. is, and my mom didn't like, after she, she remarried. Uh, and that was like when she had my other brothers, siblings, mm -hmm. but I was a kid too. Um, and then after that, she never remarried. She never had a couple, like a partner. Like I never, I never had a paternal figure and the people that mm -hmm. were, close to me or have like I could see that for instance they kind of like ended up disappointing me and it, I always felt that I never had that person who showed me to be loved right and right. then I was like choosing wrong because I didn't know better I didn't know how to be, be treated how I truly deserved what what how do you feel like you deserve to be treated by a man oh I am a fantastic woman and yes. i am and i am so loving and i am so caring and and if i have a definition my husband my husband yeah the way that i fall in love with him was because of how he was treating me and like people will I remember like being like oh she said that she chose him that's because no it was because he chose me and he shows me in a way of like that has nobody has ever chosen me mm -hmm. with my flaws with my imperfections like we're there talking about everything. He knows everything about me. And he fell in love with me like that. And yeah. nobody had ever loved me like that. And he even chose me before even I chose myself. I always say this, like before I even chose myself. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know, understand what what that meant, right? Like people will be like, or my therapist, by the way, I'm a huge advocate of therapists. Like people think like, yes. I've been in therapy forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I've always said to, 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 to everybody, like, I didn't truly understand the meaning. It goes back with the like, whole situation without the absent father of loving yourself for who you are and being treated by res with respect uttermost, you know? And I was choosing people that didn't have the space to love me, didn't have the space or need or want to choose me. It was more yeah. of like, ah, she's, she's hot. Let's just, you know, and then just pass the page without giving mm -hmm. me a second look or giving me everything I deserved at the moment. Because I used to go way above, like I am, because that, that's who I am. I go above and beyond for anybody that I care about. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to get into the show Love is Blind and your husband, because yes, uh, to your point, it seems like you guys hit it off like immediately once you got in that room and he was there and you guys were talking, it was just like nonstop. And I'm sure yeah. we only see like a small little snippet, but I'm sure you, like how long were you guys actually speaking for in oh like God. one day? And hours, and hours. hours. Like, hours. See, like, like there was days that were like six hours long. Like people don't get, do you literally, I literally like wrote the episodes of like the airtime that my face wants on it. And yeah. it's two hours and 30 minutes. Two hours and 30 minutes. That's not even a 20% of a day. Yeah. And no. it's like crazy. It's like, no, we were out of time. We were there six, seven hours. Then we would take a break and then we will hop up bunk again. There was the night optional dating where you be there four or five hours. Like, it, you were just talking and you really don't yeah. do that in real life. You like go on a few days, but you don't talk that extensively before you like know someone or date someone like that and it was it was it, i mean i'm biased obviously i married my husband there but i yeah. truly believe it worked and i fall in love with him side on scene yeah i want to talk about like right before you got on the show like what was some of your expectations going into this it's so funny i, I even i don't know maybe i'm like un poquito loca por esto. 
<laughs> but I usually even, 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 even record myself before going to the show. And oh, did you? Let a video of me. And I'm just like, like kind of like a diary, but just talking to yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I was so excited. And I just felt that that was, it was so right for me. Like, yeah. I'm someone who loves hard and loves deeply. And I wanted to see like, beyond the physical appearance and I was like it's gonna be right for me because people are gonna see me and at this time like I'm healed I'm like I feel ready and I'm like we're gonna love my personality they're gonna fall in love with me and I'm gonna find my husband and I'm gonna find my husband because there's not gonna be any distractions like I was so certain and I wasn't dating anybody like I had the situation with uh you know who who, who should name not to be mentioned and mm -hmm. besides that like that had been like a little like four months prior to the show or something and then I just kept to myself and I was like I have a feeling that this is going to happen because they don't like they don't approve you or give you like you're in until like two weeks prior filming so it was like it might happen it might not happen and I was how does so that work? Like do, like, do they approach you? Are you wanting, like, do you go and, and so I, approach I, them? I, there was, there was a, like a pool of their reality shows and stuff like that. And there was this time when I was like single and stuff like that. And it was in August of 20. I remember because I remember the date because it has been that trending topic. But yeah. yes, I remember that it was August 2021 where they pull like a pool of all the shows and I put my application in. I don't know if that's how they like reach out to me through my social, like and how they mm -hmm. found me on social media. Um, but that's how they found me. They found me through social media. And um, mm -hmm. she told me like, I was like, Hey, I fill all the applications, but I don't know if I feel it right. Like, and she's like, well, I was like, I don't know if I can put your name because I already filled it out. Like what, what is, how does it work? And like, and this was so long ago. And like, I did it last night and again, but it, it was kind of like that kind of situation. Then after that, right. you get a call and then you get interviews, background checks, psych evaluation. You go through so much process, so many questionnaires. Yeah. Like, you really don't know. Yikes. Yeah, I know. I'm sure it was a long process. I do want to point out a few things that um, I took away from the show. And then you can let me know how you feel about it. Um, one, I feel like you were definitely highlighted as the... Latina for that season, right? Like you yes. were the one that was like, I'm Puerto Rican, you were speaking Spanish, you know, and, and I just wonder like, how did that feel for you? Um, and then also even down to you meeting your husband, I, I mean, he spoke about your accent, like how, how did those things make you feel? Like for me, I'm always going to be proud of being Puerto Rican. Like I, Boricua de pura cepa, like I mentioned, and I'm always going to feel proud of where I come from. And I didn't mind it. Like, people are going to, like, talk whatever they want to talk. People are, and I learned really early on, like, people are going to like you, and they're going to dislike you. And there's nothing you can do about it, right? And at the end of the day, when you have like, your own or a room, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, what really matters is what you think about yourself. And... My husband just took it as like a, like, he's just making jokes. Like he even made a comment of like, oh, so like from, oh, so you look like Cardi B because I told him I was Puerto Rican. I was like, she's Dominican. She's not Puerto Rican. And like, it, there's a lot of like aspect that comes to it. But it's like when I, you know, when people are doing it like evilly or based on ignorance or actually doing it because of hatred. Right. And mm -hmm. As someone who, I left the island when 2017, I didn't, I, it was not like, oh, I grew up in the United States. No, I was an adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in 2017, I remember like when I, were, I was used to work as a, as a food and beverage manager and people will call me imported or they will oh. call me or ask me like, do you have a visa or how do you even get here? Like just things like that, that you're like, Ugh. but you just keep going I guess like and I'm never going to be ashamed of who I am I wonder like behind the scenes you know the things that we don't get to see um with you just kind of navigating through the show and also like I said being highlighted as the Latina of the season um do you feel like this was kind of like a, a 
almost like a teachable moment that you had to like also share with some of the staff members and kind of put them in their place, right? With yeah, certain things that like, they would say. There is another, there, there's, there was a couple of other Latinas where they're Mexican, they were not Puerto Rican. I was the only Puerto Rican there. But um, I remember that they will like mispronounce one of the girl's name. Mm -hmm. And I will correct that every single time. I'm like, it's not that difficult. And if you have, right. if, 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 if you have a doubt of how to pronounce a name, because name you don't translate names. People seem to not know that you don't translate names. And <laughs> and they always say it's so bad. I'm like, dude, uh, it's not this. And I will get so frustrated. And she'll be like, it's fine. I'm like, no, it's not. It. Like you know, at least twenty times. Like. But it is what it is. Like I feel like, <laughs> yeah. you, it's it's there's so much you can do as a person. You just, uh, yeah. Like again, like it, it was a teachable. I think it was a teachable moment of both ways, right? And I think also like I was really naive. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was really naive in the sense of like I was gonna be really liked and accepted for yeah. who I was. And did you feel like you were not, not really nice. liked? Like, did you feel like almost like an outcast? Because I didn't get that no. from this season. No, 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 I didn't. Okay. I didn't. I didn't feel like that. What I'm, what I'm saying is like the, in the moment, like everybody, mm -hmm. oh yeah, the girls. But then when the show came out, that was another story with the girls. And yeah. it's like, oh, the true colors are coming out. You really didn't like me, but you're here texting me saying that you love me or saying all these things. And then you're going on podcasts to talk right. negatively about me. Oh, okay. I see how it is. So things like that and situations like that, they're really like, I don't think I was like, like, it was more fake, like <laughs> in that sense. And yeah, and I've been called and I've had my situationship with friends from there are not from Latina raíces or Latina roots that are going to be like she's too much like it was when mm -hmm. I said that it was not just from like a romantic perspective it was also a friendships like I've I have failed friendships where people have called me too much or oh I cannot deal with that too much right now or like the amount of things that happen on my on my life are like yeah they're a lot but I handle them as the best is that I can, right? With the tools that I have and keep going from them. If that doesn't mean that I'm going to call you and cry 24 seven, it's not that. And I think they just, people very really being like, oh, let me just vent to you. And the definition of friendship and it just comes like really like shocking in terms of culture. Yeah. And I was really naive in that aspect. I want to talk about the reality from like what we're actually seeing on screen um because you did receive some backlash in terms of like the friendship right and everybody kind of questioned <laughs> <laughs> to I this said that day lately. yeah so you to you this definitely... day yeah but, but what, why do you think people are like giving that feedback like where do you think this backlash is coming from no. what is it that we didn't see that happened that maybe didn't make it to the final cut Oh, you guys didn't see it a lot. Like, obviously, like I've said before, this is not my show. If if it was my show, it would have been portrayed really differently. And yeah, that whole conversation that people disliked me so much for not saying another word. Um, it was a five hour long conversation. It was like caught in between pieces and mushed together. And if you pay attention, you can see where there are the time lapses and like. And then they change the camera and say, because it's not at the moment. And like, yeah. if you don't, if you're not there, I can see how people perceive like, oh, she was, but then at the end, I didn't have, sometimes I say like, yo no tengo esa malicia. I was so naive. Like, and you guys didn't see, I was not just friends with one, one girl. I was friends with all of them and yeah. I treated them all, all like, the same way. And I love them all dearly. Like I didn't, I didn't see it. This show, and I the other day I was talking to one of the girls, and she's like, "Well, it's kind of like a competition." And I never saw it as a competition. I saw it as like, "What is going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give my all and, and be myself." And that's 
And that is something that I will never regret because I was myself. And right. people took it the other way, but it wasn't because of something that I did. It was more of like, this is how they narrated my story. Mm-hmm. And you have to trust that person that that is narrating your story to do it the right way. But is it really going to be the right way when it's someone who doesn't know you and someone who's just seen hours and hours and hours and compilations and they have a job they have a job to portray the most entertaining show that they can right. and sometimes right. like people are so quick to judge some seem to like like you don't know these people you don't know anybody and i have to say like and now looking back and looking at the future seasons and all the shows that i've seen from reality you see them with another eye with other set of eyes and it's like no one really is shown truly who they are you cannot right. just someone and you cannot know someone for two hours of use of t- tv like right. that's impossible and it's but what a- yes and it's put together for you to see mm-hmm. what what are some of the the unexpected challenges that you face when the camera actually stopped rolling what was that reality for you like Honestly, if you get to a point that you forget that the cameras are there. So it was pretty natural, like when the cameras are gone and it was just me and my husband, like that wasn't something difficult to acclimate to. It was more mm-hmm. of the fact of like, oh, I'm bored. Because <laughs> like usually right. like I had 25 things to juggle at the same time and that was not the case anymore. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, wait, wait a minute. And that production team, the one that was following us when we were like, engage and after Mexico I love that production team they were they were kind of like my family already and they were like there and we would just laugh and we would like get angry and upset at the same situations together and we were that unit and we will make jokes to each other and like and sometimes we just like me and, and my husband are really playful and mm-hmm. I wish they showed more of that because we were really playful Mm -hmm. It will be the biggest jokesters in each other. And I think it sometimes is necessary. This world is too serious. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What was it like watching it back? I didn't like it watching. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's it's just like, you're always going to have that feeling of like, wait, but why didn't you show this? Wait, why didn't you show that? And I think that's a really natural feeling. And like, obviously, I'm not, ever i'm always going to feel grateful for the experience for the opportunity for like i i I do all it to them that i'm married and a lot of the things that have happened and i'm never going to look that part negatively like the washing experience wasn't pleasant the hate wasn't pleasant like who tells you that is lying and it's really hard to navigate but at the end of the day, I went there to get married, and that's exactly what I did. Well, let's talk about it. How did you know he was the one? Oh, my God. So it's so funny because, like, I remember this day that the producers in the solo, they're like, Lydia, why are you so, like, what is your, like, hold up with Milton? And I'm like, it's just, he's so young. Like, for me, <laughs> that was like, he's so young. And I remember that day, he's like, why don't, can you just, if you put the age outside, like my producer was like, I'm like, oh, he's so funny. And he is hot. When he talks about you, he is hot. And I went there (laughs) the next day and I was like, hey, I have this concern about you and it's your age. And he was like, well, if I hadn't told you my age and Mm -hmm. Have I ever acted with you immaturely? Mm-hmm. And I was like, something click that that moment. I'm like, wait a minute, no. So it's kind of like our own judgments and our own issues, I guess. Like I've never dated anybody younger than me. And I was like, no. And I, that day, it was a long gone. I knew when he was the one when he was like constantly making me laugh. And mm-hmm. when I actually asked him, hey, please be vulnerable with me. Like, I need someone who is vulnerable with me. And he was willing to open. And that's when he told me his story, his biggest fear. And, mm-hmm. and he was actually listening to me and actually, like, 
just day one he called me his Puerto Rican wife like how can not not fall for in love with someone who would say it like that and he always spoke really from the heart and I think I had that vibe from the beginning and like it was my own deal issues with his age that was like holding me back at the beginning but then I was like I need to let this go I need to let this go because this is a great guy and I was right, and he was a great guy, and I'm so glad I did because it was it worked out. It worked out the way that should have worked out, and it's my husband. We're about to be two years married, and I know. it's crazy. And how has your like perspective on the relationship now that you're in the public eye from the show? How has that changed? So honestly, I love people. I love when people reach out to me and be like. <laughs> Like when they do it kindly, there's some people that are not really kind. They're sometimes rude, but besides that, the majority of them that like, comes to me, I'm like, it makes my heart warm when like people are reaching out to me and telling me that I'm an inspiration to them and that I'm a role model and that they admire me and they, because oh, I've been called too much so many times and you have if you can do it, that's so all can I. And I'm like, that's exactly what I do, guys. Like I want you guys to like to feel like that's what mm-hmm. I want to transmit and in terms of our relationship people people adore my husband like he I mean he did like he did amazing obviously but like people adore him like sometimes I don't get recognized in public but if I'm with him people know, know. exactly yeah, know. The, the minute of and I think it's like he's more of a reserved person that I am like I'm pretty sure he will that, that, you're he spicy doesn't. in comparison he's the same to care. <laughs> he is like yeah. no, 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 I don't have to deal with all that and he'll be fine and he's in his world and he'll be fine but it does have like I felt so relieved the day that I can finally post him and I can actually include it on my socials and it's just this weight lifted out of my shoulders and I didn't have to worry about like my ring showing or not showing and it's a huge freedom and it was hard because there were some friends that didn't even know that I was married. Well, how did and your family react to the news? Like when you told them like, I found someone. My mom was really excited. My mom was really excited for me yeah. and I, she was my, she, my number one cheerleader and she was really happy and I remember calling her at the airport they did show that when she when I called her at the airport and she was like oh my god and like <laughs> after like I speak to my mom like every other day at the most and yeah. at the least at the least and three weeks without talking to each other and my mom I found that one and like here he is and it's it's such a special moment and something that I'm going to always going to remember really close to my Knowing everything that you know now with like the turnout and just how, how everything went, what would you have done differently? Honestly, like sometimes I go back and forth and it's like, oh, like, well, if I've done things differently, would have the outcome change? And, mm-hmm. and the only thing that would have not changed or, or react to something in terms of that would be my how I, I behave in the lounge in terms of like with the girls in terms of like yeah. my friendships and that was something that I actually will go back and change and I would have just stayed mm-hmm. in my, my, my own corner because now I know that some of the people there were not genuine that they were not kind and they were not there for the right reasons and they were actually charts <laughs> in a tank trying to yeah. get you and if Knowing that part now, in terms of dating, no, I wouldn't do anything differently. But in terms of the lounge and my relationship with the girls, I would have just kept to myself in my corner. Yeah, to be honest, I, I think also like oftentimes in reality TV, particularly when it's like dating shows and they're trying to like pair people together, people question the authenticity of that. So did you have people question if like this marriage was real, if this love was actually yes. real? Oh my like, God, how, yes, all are time. you guys really together? And well, my favorite, they're paid actors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure you get that a lot. Oh my God. Yes. All the time. Like they're paid actors. They're paid actors. And I'm like, 
<laughs> no, we're not. That is real. It is authentic. Their show is authentic. We do not have a script. Again, they do edit and compile and put a show. However, mm -hmm. it's not scripted. It's just mm -hmm. our lives. And yes, I fall in love. I'm married and I'm not a paid actor. All right. Like I'm really in love. <laughs> I'm really in love. Yeah. I'm really in love. Do you I keep in love if you love to get married here? Like, come yeah. on, people. Uh, do you do you keep in contact with some of the cast members? And if so, the old, uh, I only be, like keep in contact with like a few of the girls, and I think like majority is only two of them, and it's Estefania and Stacy. Oh, and Taylor. Mm -hmm. Taylor mm -hmm. every now and then but yeah those are the only girls I actually speak with um yeah that honestly that from that and, and then Izzy and James are like friends and they see each other every now and then so obviously I'm there so hey bro hey bro and just go from him there but friends friends like Estefania Stacy and Taylor okay. those are the three girls I have to come contact with and in terms of like the fans and the people that are watching the show, um, what do you think was like the biggest misconception about you throughout that journey on Love is That Born? I was a stalker. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to insult people and I don't want to offend people, but I'm like, at the same time, it's like, are you really going to believe that person over there? Really? Really? Mm. And it's like, sometimes I'm like... <laughs> If if I was at least at least two percent of how that person is, mm -hmm. the story will completely change. In the sense of like, if I would have kept to myself, mm -hmm. if I would have like kept my grace where everything was going down, mm -hmm. things would have been really difficult, and I would have destroyed a few of the people's reputation. And I didn't. And I'm going to keep that to myself because. At the end of the day, I'm not here to damage anybody's image. I'm not here mm -hmm. to, you know, you, you resolve that on your own. On the back, and when you're alone, you have to right. live that with yourself. You're the one that's spreading lies. You're the one that is making up stories. And that's on you. I'm here happily married and living my best life and going through everything that I want and this, my heart desires, like, you're not one of my concerns. And I think that's, like, basically one of, like, the biggest misconception is that, like, no, I'm not a stalker. <laughs> if I would have been a stalker, I would have not been cast into the show. If I was a stalker, I would have had a criminal record. I would have, yeah. like, the list goes on and on and on. Especially coming from the person that was coming from. Right, like, come on, put two right. one and one together, and you yeah. even hear him or say things like, "Oh, like yeah, we kept seeing each other." Like, come on, come uh -huh. on, people. So yeah, I am not a stalker, and I am definitely not psychotic, nor crazy. I am. I think I'm just spicy. I'm just spicy, okay. And it just comes with being Latina. It just comes to be. Again, and I am going to defend myself and I'm going to defend my image to the best of my abilities because if not me, who? Exactly. Were there any like behind the scenes moments that maybe we didn't get to see but had a significant impact on your relationship? Oh my God, yes. When when he brought the rock and I put this on like my socials and I share this in my socials where we were supposed to exchange the gifts that we brought home, he brought a rock with him to his potential wife. Like, the teacher wasn't gonna appreciate that. The flight attendant wasn't gonna appreciate that. Like, I'm trying to think about professions that they were there. Yeah, yeah. No, like, none of the girls were gonna appreciate that besides me, and ended up being me. How more meant to be? Like, yeah. and even the fact of the bumblebee, like, they just, they really don't explain that story. Uh, it didn't air. It didn't make it. But when I saw the bumblebee, I'm like, I'm like, because I had a really, Wait, can, really, can really you clear. explain that story for people that maybe haven't yeah, of course. seen Love so is Blind? So basically, there's a bumblebee, like a tall, huge tall bumblebee. 
when one of the gifts, the gifts that they show. And I see, and I'm like, what the hell? I've ha- I'm a allerg- severely allergic to bees. I have mm-hmm. tons of allergies. And I saw it, I'm like, this prankster, he just literally gave me a huge bumblebee because a bumblebee was the one that almost cost me my life. And I ended up in an emergency room and had two shots of EpiPen and a bunch of medicine in my system that then developed an asthma and developed all my allergies. So it was like the root cause of a lot of health complications for me. And when I saw it, I was like, this guy, like, what are you doing? And I just laughed. I was like, he's just trying to be funny. And then he's like, no. He went and said to me, that was the first time that you were vulnerable with me. And they share a story that was traumatic for you. And I was like, you turn something traumatic to something cute. And then he says that that's why you say, oh, and yellow, because yellow is your favorite color. That's why you guys see. But yeah. the whole, oh, you, that was the first time you were vulnerable with me. And that's why I chose the bumblebee. Like, it has a whole different meaning. Like, now I see bumblebee and I remember him. I don't remember being in a hospital fighting for right. my my life, you know? Like, and those are the Shout things out I, to I, Milton. I would Milton I is a really stand-up guy. <laughs> yes. And you guys didn't get to see us nerding out the, the huge rock that he got me. And like it was such a cute moment. And I wish I had I had I even had it for myself. <laughs> and go oh. back and like, oh but I yeah, like don't say so that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for you and Milton? Like what are the What's next five right? years? Hold so he's guys. currently work he's currently working on his, his MBA. Um He's really been really busy with work and we're both really busy with our careers and trying to keep it up and just making the best that we can. Um, especially like right now I am in the field in Corpus Christi because I had to go and then he's like back at Houston and at home and it, it's, it's like we just keep it going, right? Like you just like, Getting, our, getting ourselves where we want to be. We have been traveling a lot. We recently went to Dubai. That was spectacular. Yes. That was a great, great, great trip. And we had an amazing time. And um, that's our thing. Like, when we travel, it's, we have so much fun. We have so much fun. I, I, I did have, I did hit the jackpot with that one in terms of having my travel partner for life. And yeah, yeah like, that's basically it. Like, Focus on our careers, keep grinding and doing our best every day. Would you guys ever go back together on reality TV? I don't think that James or Milton would. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would be a possibility. I like the TV. I like the, the cameras and keeping everyone myself on the team. I feel like it's so fun and entertaining. Um, not watching it back, but like being in that aspect, like the experience was so cool. I think that's yeah, yeah. kind of like one us on a lifetime kind of thing. But I don't think my mm-hmm. husband, my husband doesn't, doesn't care for it. He, He's like, I found my wife. I'm good. That's <laughs> it. That's it. I don't need anything else. Like, that's just what? No, I don't. And like, sometimes it's like, but you got married there. And they're like, He's like, and? But I found my hus- my wife. Well, so why I have to like even detain that? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> what what advice would you give like future participants to Love Is Blind? Like what what advice would you give them on being on the show and just that entire process? Be yourself, be yourself because then you won't have any regrets. And even when times come and things get rough and hard, at least you're gonna have that to yourself that you were genuinely yourself and give it your all. Give it your absolute all yeah screw whatever what anybody thinks like at the end of the day you you decided to go to that experiment to find your person this dating sucks in the real world it yes, truly it does. sucks like some <laughs> of my single friends are like well, yeah you don't know how rough it is in here and they've been single for a while because they cannot find someone and it's like it's so shallow and superficial nowadays that uh, i mean 
I ended up in the show for a reason. Yeah. And just give it your all. Just give it your all and you're going to find the person. What is meant to be, it will be. Very true. Very true. Um, what is one message you would want to give your fans? Oh my God, that I love them with all my heart. I, 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 I don't... I don't like the word fans per se. I feel like people are like, oh, you're famous. I'm not famous. I'm a little bit known, just a little bit known. You can see myself on TV, but it, it, it fills my heart with joy when they come with nicest, the nicest messages to me. And yeah. keep it up, guys. You guys make my day. Sometimes I have us always, as always, as we all do, sorry, as we all do, sometimes we have rough days and having that message and like, oh my God, Lydia, you inspire me. Or Lydia, my five-year-old didn't like her hair and seeing you rocking your hair, your natural hair, like has like really like getting her on. And like now she wants to be like, yes, curly hair. Like messages like that, you just like warm my heart. And yeah. I appreciate all of them. And they're my friends. Are you ready for my rapid fire questions, Lydia? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me you're Latina without telling me you're Latina. Me gusta el mofongo. Oh, okay. Love that. Um, what's one thing you need in the morning? Coffee. What kind of coffee? Oh, it has to be a latte. Because my latte? stomach can I handle. Yeah, my stomach can I handle black coffee. <laughs> okay. You cannot. <laughs> What's one thing you haven't worked on that you would like to work on? My eating habits. What? What do you mean by that? Are I you have just terrible. eating like junk food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And not necessarily like like junk food. More like I have tons of allergies. When I tell you allergies, I'm allergic to rice, wheat. What? Ginger. And it's so hard to eat something that doesn't have any of those. And it's like, okay, when it's like gluten free, it has rice flour. And it's not like severe allergies. My food allergies aren't severe except for dairy. <laughs> but I love dairy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you and cafe con leche. I do. do. I have a husband, so I have to. What, what are you making? What are you chefing up over there? So last time, what did I cook last time? I think I did some chicken and then uh, make uh, some chicken rice. And oh, I made sushi cups. That's what I made. I made rice, okay. salmon, and I put some avocado cream cheese and I made it like in a cupcake. Oh, they okay. were really good. You really <laughs> like it. So, okay. Like, you know. If you could have the last supper with three Latinas, dead or alive, who would they be? Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh, the Last Supper with three Latinas. Oh, definitely will be one my mom, as corny as that sounds. That does not second, sound corny. The second will be Jennifer Lopez. I need to, one day I have to meet her. Oh, and Rosalind Chanches. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Mm-hmm. All good choices. All good choices. Choices. Um, finish this sentence. Growing up Latina is. Growing up Latina me is okay. Growing up Latina is being spicy nice. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Lydia. Thank you for having me. This was amazing. I love talking to you. Thank you so much. Yes. Guys. All right. And when we do our live show, I want you to come to New York and pull up to the sala. I am going to. I, I promise you I'll be there. <laughs> okay. Love you. Thank you so much. Love you too. Bye.